all this is dr mubeen sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so i wanted to discuss or at least review together the cdc director rochelle velensky and her comments that she made in washington university school of medicine so let's very quickly listen in it was it made me quite upset so let's see if it uh, did i become upset correctly or not so the actual i'll show you the link to the original uh, video as well this is a, an excerpt from this here she's going to talk about the vaccines and she said that cnn she was somewhere when or she could tell where she was when cnn informed or said it is 95% efficacious so that is the uh, information's flow and secondly uh, she talked about who knew i'm paraphrasing will listen in who knew about the vaccine uh, waning would occur and the new variants will make it ineffective that is what is happening and in the meantime and look at how casually and kind of carefree she is when she's discussing as if it is a funny thing that just happened and those who were talking about it in the meantime they were bad mouthed they were targeted they were cancelled they were punished they were dragged virtually not literally uh, in the streets they received death threats and now here is cdc director simply saying well that we didn't know would happen so check it out um well you know i think i can tell you where i was when cnn became that it was 95 percent effective on the vaccine i can tell you where i was when cnn said it is 95 percent effective so many of us wanted to be helpful so many of us wanted to say okay this is our ticket out right now we're done um so many of us wanted it to be helpful and just said, start taking it and we are done. I think that had been overall the behavior of these ad administrations to simply say, take your damn vaccine and be done. And then you would see later in the same clip that she would say the efficacy is now doubtful. So I think we have perhaps too little caution and too much optimism. We had too little caution and too much optimism. And those who were presenting caution were being punished. Emma was punishing them on behalf of CDCs and FDAs. Medical boards were punishing them. People were getting letters. They were being canceled. They were, the businesses were being ruined. Their careers were being ruined. They were being fired. And here, too little caution, too much optimism. It's it's a casual, casual thing. This happened. Look at this. Look, hear this again. And perhaps too little caution and too much optimism um, for some good things that came our way. I, I really do. I, I think all of us wanted it to be done. All of us wanted it to be done. Yes, we wanted it to be done. And we thought that there were more possibilities to help, which were actively stopped nobody said waning when when nobody said waning the undergrad level of microbiology books and immunology books talk about waning undergrad page 9 of the immunology and microbiology by abbas i think 2019 edition page 9 talks about waning you know, oh, this vaccine's gonna work. Oh well, <laughs> it'll work. It'll wear off. Um, nobody said, well, what if the next variant doesn't? It doesn't. It's not. Did you see how carefree? Yeah, it is kind of a funny thing that nobody talked about that. This vaccine's gonna work. Oh well, <laughs> it'll work. It'll wear off. Um, nobody said, well, what if the next variant doesn't? It doesn't. It's not as potent against the next variant. So the actual full clip, if you would like to watch, is here. So this is the Washington University School of Medicine. This is their program, uh, Department of Medicine Grand Rounds, in which they had invited her March 3rd. 
uh, MD and PH director of the Center for Disease Control. So that, that is how CDC looks at the vaccines and waning. Okay, so that is just that. Um, how are things? Let's do chit chat. <laughs> So my progress with the chit chat moving to the other depart other systems, I still have not figured out. So I have figured out this much. So let me explain what I have figured out. What I figured out is the following. If I use OBS, OBS is a software, correct? And what that does is that helps you do a relay. And what I can do is with OBS, I can capture a part of the window. So imagine I am listening to my own live, live view. And of course, the audio is muted and probably video is somehow whatever. It's there. And then this part is the live chat. I can ask OBS to just pick up this much of the part and show it on the live camera with camera as well i can still not do things like like this if i go here like this i'll never forget her fake tears on tv despicable for a leader a very very dis disgusting i could not even imagine what i did not expect was this kind of a oh who knew that this would wane and there'll be it won't be effective we all knew that this would happen and anyways so back to the obs thing this is what i think i can do and i'm going to try that tomorrow in a sneaky way so i'm not going to disturb you all so somewhere in the middle of the day tomorrow i'm going to try it with this way and see what happens so that is where i am that is how far i am and dr z thank you so much for your talk it actually i used your messages for my sleep yesterday. And I also wanted to report back to you, you are here today. Um, I did get my general physical, I got my labs and everything done and I've gotten my results, nothing bad, uh, thank God. So went in, in person and met with my doctor. <laughs> Gold Country says, no video, just green screen with audio at Odyssey, I won't be going there, okay. So I think we should give a fair try to, um, to rumble. I know that some people actually don't like rumble. I have this privilege of being so politically agnostic that I don't even care which platform is on what leaning. Look, this platform, YouTube, has a huge bias. They follow. CDCs, FDAs, and again, nothing bad in following them because these organizations are healthcare administrations. So you can follow them, but you can see how glaringly wrong these administrations are. And so platform like YouTube could actually set up, they have enough resources to set up their own appropriate fact checkers, not the fact checkers who says, don't talk about ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine. They don't have it. So YouTube has its own leaning. It is a different thing that if some other folks talk about ivermectin, they are not stopped. But if I talk about it, I'm punished right away. That has something to do with the people as well who, who listen to the video and become upset that why did you talk about it? And then they uh, report me. But regardless of all of that, if you are okay, uh, Rumble may be another platform to try if Odyssey's experience is not great. Maybe we do it on both. I, I don't know, but we still in the middle of it. It, it seems like Rumble um, has a political leaning. And because of that, some folks don't like it. My thought was, if it is an independent area where they allow me to speak my mind, regardless of what my audience and my political or not political leanings are, and they don't disturb us or bother us, then it should be okay. And my apologies if the picture is not clear. Somehow my camera is not focusing today. <laughs> it has lost its mind. So maybe its lens need to be cleared. So 
Lisa says Rumble is not political. Good. I have no idea, but there are some folks who said I'm not going to go to Rumble. So I don't. I don't really have a leaning. So I just want a platform where I can say things without having someone breathing on my neck. <laughs> and Texas, I I saw your message that there were some personal messages. Please just block the folks who do not know how to. Um, have a healthy uh, discourse where there must be disagreement as well, but these are respectful and decent disagreements towards a solution. If these are just attacks, and for me it was yesterday when I went to Dr. William Campbell, uh, sorry, Murphy. Dr. William Murphy's work is so important, and he'll be with us this Friday. You would listen to him with your own uh, ears and you would see him, you would see how accomplished his work is, how accomplished he is. And one of his pieces that I shared with you was autoantibodies. Remember the network hypothesis? He is the author of that hypothesis article for COVID where he's saying that vaccines or infection can cause production of autoantibodies against ACE2, which then can result in long-haul outcomes. And not only that, he has actually further researched that it is possible that people might develop autoimmune diseases and with every exposure to coronaviruses, they would have a relapse. Then he has done a research on the uh, menstrual irregularities and the vaccines and infection. He has done another research which nobody wanted to publish was about the uh, vaccine, uh, COVID vaccines, and uh, this was a research in mice and autism. My point is, he is very, very uh, thorough, detailed, and busy uh, researcher, and he is leading a lab which does gene therapy research, stem cell research, cancer research, cancer management research, and so on. He is the one who is helping one of those people who is helping to figure out how do we resolve cancers? How do we make sure that the, in, uh, the hereditary diseases are reducing and we can, we can fix them and so on? And we were sitting in his lab, his office, his lab, and his lab has a regulation that you cannot be without a mask. It's a BSL-3, I believe. It's a safety level lab. He was showing me from far off because of the safety reasons that there are rooms there where one, you cannot go without all those hoods and everything. And number two, if the door is open for more than this many seconds, police arrives and there were police cars standing outside, parked outside. This was such a interesting, sophisticated, important lab. And they, they have a regulation that if you are inside the lab, you have to have a mask. And I posted his picture. And there were actually, I, to my surprise, there were actually people who were not able to value the person and his work. And they were upset about mask and calling it diapers on the face and so on. So I just have reached at this conclusion. Block them. Let, let them go away. This uh, From this channel... We do so much of service. When it happens to me, I, I'm okay. With, but when it happens to my guests or, or my uh, cool bean tribe, I really feel bad. Yesterday when this happened to his, uh, when people, you can still go and read the comments. And you would, you would cry with the, with the way people behaved. And that I just, one, I cannot understand how people think that way. And number two, I think it is not healthy to have such dialogues or try to convince or try to reason. So we can just request them that, hey, this is not a good fit for you. So Pam says, what about autism? So he actually shared his study, and I would be reviewing that study very soon uh, about autism and vaccines.
Okay, so John 653 says Rumble is the future for non censored content. It also is a better user in interactive experience compared to Odyssey. I have a lot of uh, challenges with Odyssey. I love Odyssey. Their team is very responsive. They really have a spark. They want to grow and they are helping and they're not censoring. So I love that. But experience is not yet there. And I want to stand with them even when the experience is not there. But then the whole thing just does not work yet for the kind of experience that we're looking for, this experience. And so we may have to be on Rumble. Lisa says, easy to be nasty online. Absolutely. My uncle who raised me, he used to say, it is easy to curse someone. It is very difficult to hold your tongue. <laughs> Rima says, this past two years has shown so many idiots in our village. Yes, so I actually still have this belief. When people call me names, as much as that hurts me or I become upset or they're trying to cancel me, they're, destroy, they're destroying my business, whatever, I have less reaction. But when somebody goes after a, a guest of ours, he is our guest together. I drove two and a half hours to go meet him. And the reason when I did his, uh, when I presented his uh, article, he reached out and he said, thank you very much for presenting my article. Uh, very well done. And you had raised some uh, thoughts about immune systems behavior. I had, uh, if I had had a chance, I would have done that too. But there was some word, word count kind of a thing. And so I said, thank you very much for reaching out. I, I love your work. I would love to handshake uh, to have a handshake with you for your work i admire such folks i admire researchers leaders uh, the ones who are who don't care for these politics and are sitting somewhere trying to solve problems for humanity trying to move us forward so he said why not come over so it turned out he was here in sacramento uc davis which is about two best case two hour, 10 minutes, but two and a half hour about for me. So I went there yesterday morning, uh, met him. We had lunch together. We had talks together. It was so much fun. If you look at his picture, he has papers everywhere. And I was cracking up that there were some magazines on the floor. And he was actually picking up those magazines on, from the floor and saying, why don't you take this with you? This has on this page, this article, which is very, very interesting to read. And that was just so funny. Uh, this is the kind of person he was. Wafer says that, uh, why don't you talk? We reached out to her. She did not uh, join us. <laughs> blank, blank says, that was like 400 in gas to Cali to get there. Uh, the, that was the gas was five dollar. I don't know, sixty three cent or something. It was expensive. <laughs> okay, so apologies for the camera. This I'll have to fix that too. Jessica says, I have so much respect for those people who devote their lives to educate and research and the betterment of others. Absolutely. His whole career, I was looking at his labs that he, he leads and heads. I was looking at his office and various. So you could look at that and say, oh, so many papers and, and kind of unorganized. But there were so many papers, research papers and books and maps. And it was just beautiful. Melody says, thanks all who responded to me. Okay, so what are we talking about? <laughs> YouTube says, I use Odyssey for the Duran and it works fine. Also follow others on Odyssey. Only thing I dislike is no fast play and no saving leaves off spot. I see. This is the... Um, the texting or the chatting, which is part of this discussion, 
here sometimes i feel that my my presence is less important and cool beans talking with each other and having fun is a is a more interesting social uh, uh, social gathering so we were having some challenges in odyssey with that Rima says, does it feel like COVID has skulked away? I am Jan, almost everyone I knew had it. Now I know no one. Yeah, it seems like it is just on the way out. Gold Country says, ADHD and autism started exploding at the same time that vitamin D deficiency became normal. Any chance they are related? It is possible. I actually was looking at a couple of vitamin D uh, studies, not just for the um, SARS-CoV-2, but for other things as well. Um, gold, this is actually a good area to, to research. Laurie says that you got out of the house and had human conversation with another doctor in person. Must have been exciting for you. Absolutely. And I also... Uh, <laughs> Barbara says, here we are complaining about 450. Well, you and Lotus are lucky that you have 450. Over here, it's above 55. So, uh, Laurie, uh, I also like that path as well. So, when we go to Lake Tahoe, that is the same path. And it's beautiful that farmlands and beautiful mountains on the way i love it the day was beautiful as well it was bright it says that i became tired after the drive but it was nice <laughs> both says gas in russia is one dollar a gallon okay thank you i ball and on to the paper yes So Gina says, hi, Dr. B, what do you think about those bombs in the UK at the bio labs? Are there any bombs in on the, you think we have anything to worry about? Were there any bombs in the bio lab? Of course, if the bio lab is BSL-3 and above, then we should be very much worried because they could have um, pathogens that are serious, these kind of pathogen. I think BSL-3 does not, is not allowed to have SARS-CoV-2 it's probably four and five or probably five. Doug is here. Hey, Doug, how are you? Rubin says, do you think that we'll ever return to a time when doctors have paid time each day to read current research rather than having 10 minutes to see each person and rush them? No, but... I have bad news for doctors. These um, AI systems, they are going to take up a lot of our work. And so this is why I keep pushing doctors to go a level up, nurses to go to the level of doctors and normal patients, persons to become as good as fundamental uh, knowledge that nurses and doctors have. That is what I think needs to happen because technology is available to do it. And AI is going to, AI has already taken over, for example, for radiology. Radiology is almost done with AI in many, many areas. You are seeing that surgery is done with robots and there are going to be autonomous robots as well that would do it. So doctors who would not find time to grow, they will be competing with AI. And this is a true thing for all society. We all are, I think even now, I, I call this that the corporations have genies of their own. It's just that that is one, just as we say that rich have more advantage. Now, if this is a corporation, they have one more advantage. They can have their own genies. They have their own genies, and these genies are re really AI. This AI is very similar to the old-time stories where we say 
this person had a genie or that person had a genie and they were using them for their advantage. Now, corporations are pitting us against the AI. Bots are working with us on daily basis. They're catching us on daily basis. And corporations are able to do things with these AI systems that a normal human being at this time is kind of at a disadvantage to do them. So... <laughs> Rima says I want a genie so Rima you know that there are many open source and free AI engines including Google's own engine which is beautiful and AI art is so beautiful nowadays the painterly work that AI does <laughs> Texas Max says I just need a wife I used to be a good one <laughs> Now there are even AI spouses, right? So there is a company who has created an AI engine where you can tell them a person to simulate in AI. And they actually ask that person or actor for their permission to model them in AI. And then they can deliver an AI based uh, such person. NW says it is your bar, Dr. Bean. It is all of us together. I just don't want my guests, my other cool beans here to be insulted by folks. That's That it always makes me upset. John Snyder says doc in a box, yes. And that doc in a box would probably perform better than many of us. <laughs> Ryan says... Lori says, AI will never take the place of your drawings, though, Dr. Bean. You are safe to keep teaching. Have you actually seen AI-based drawings? Let me show you. You will be AI-based art generator. So these pieces of art are actually generated by AI. And you can, you can tell what kind of art, for example, this is AI generated art. So if you see here, this says one of a kind artwork by our most recent algorithms inspired by the greatest artist of all time check this out <laughs> out of luck six hundred dollars why does ai need to sell it for six hundred dollars oh this looks nice i like this one this one forthcoming so you can actually and there are many other AI art generators. I don't know what would turn up, so I'm going to take it away for a second so nothing bad starts appearing here. And once I am... So there are many, and the one of the beautiful one that I really love um, is the NVIDIA. Have you seen NVIDIA's studio? Uh, NVIDIA Canvas, I believe. This is the one. Let me show you something that is so funny. Okay, so check this out. This is NVIDIA AI engine. 
that creates art. So if I go here and I say, I want to have some grass, I can then draw here. And you see that is here. And I can decide what kind of a scene it is, sunset or not sunset. And now let's say I want to have some birds. They can't, you can't see them. So let's see clouds. Then let's say we want to have, can we change this to a style? If it is not a sunset, somewhere over here is when it can be other than the sunset. <laughs> we just start to be sunset at this time. So then you can go and you can draw things like this. Look, th this was supposed to be a tree or something. There you go. Um, look. Then you can make rocks with it. You see it? And this is what is this? This is dirt. So I can make dirt. Let's make a river in here. This is a river. So if I start from here and go like this, look, that is a river. And this is a sea. I can make a sea here. Sea here. And should we have some snow? The I love the rocks. I love making rocks with this one. There are rocks. Um, hill. See? So... <laughs> Lori says, good job, Dr. Bean. Looks just like the one on the left, my right. So this is NVIDIA Studio. So if you have NVIDIA card, you can download their studio and make paintings like this. Can you say it's like paint by numbers? Yes. That's a very interesting one. So would like to see AI-based signal detection. So AI system and the processors, the AI engines are available. It's just that somebody has to, as you said, train and kind of uh, put data to it. Jacqueline says, art without feelings, isn't that just a picture? Yeah, so that's the interesting thing. It makes such a beautiful art, but it still looks kind of not the most fun. And when I make my art without much compositional feelings and hue and contrast, I still think, oh, wow, that is awesome. Meeple Art says, do you know if we can access Korea's adverse effects database for Novax? So far in Australia, we have parathesia, chest pain, headache amongst listed. Researchers use cures, but I can't find it. I do not know, but that will be very interesting, Meeple Art. Skyfrog says, where's the airplane? Let's make an airplane. Let's see if there is an airplane. Water, mountains, mountains, mountains. Skyfrog, it looks like I'll have to make the airplane by myself on it. What is this? Stone wall. Oh, I can make a stone wall, Skyfrog. I don't think I can make a plane. Is that really a stone wall? Wow, yes. Look, stone wall. Okay, so <laughs> it says these are hills. Okay, fine. Not mountains. Yes, hills. One can actually take, for example, let's say mountain and make a mountain like this. 
in the air and then one more like this these are mountains kind of magical mountains look at that that's a beautiful mountain Alquin, this mountain is in your honor. There you go. Yes, you're correct. <laughs> Margaret says no feeling or soul. Correct, but really interesting. <laughs> Black Plank says, the guy on PBS is going to be pissed. Medi says, how's Luffy? I think Luffy must be sitting outside. Do you want me to go find Luffy? He must be sitting outside to say come back, but I'll be absent for a few minutes. So if you are okay, <laughs> Jessica, I'm no long, longer impressed by my friend's ballerina painting. Texas says, yes, save Luffy, save Luffy. So let's see if I can go find him. I'll be back in a second. You, you have a chat. I'll be back. Here is Luffy. He was actually outside. Luffy. What is this? Okay, so that was Luffy. He was outside <laughs> running around. Lori says, is he ungrounded? He's only ungrounded during the day. So now that he's inside, he's going to stay inside. He's going to start meowing for some time, but he would then stay inside. Techat says, I have trouble with rumble. When I want to skip forward, seems to get stuck buffering. Then I have to start the video over and to skip forward. That's interesting. Yep. There is AI everything. <laughs> he, he is. He is. <laughs> Skyfrog says, clone Luffy, yes. Hmm. Uh, 
so uh, has he watched Dr. Z's videos? No, but I have. Um, so what I have been doing is trying to keep him awake during the day and then he sleeps for the majority of the night. MGW says, can you gather all Novavax adverse events data and any other important info about where it has been authorized and used? Yes, I can do that. So why not I actually discuss with you the next topics that I want to do. So let me very quickly share with you and you can comment on it. So the topics that are on the docket are the these special side effects that we have already done today. Uh, Dr. Rochelle Velensky's comment, we have discussed that. New ivermectin, there are new ivermectin studies, plus a study from Honduras. I need to talk about that. Medicago, Novavax, myocarditis incidence, 130 times higher in the children, uh, spike protein in the blood after vaccination. And it is interesting that study that discusses the spike protein being in the blood that discusses that after the spike protein, uh, the vaccine is given, messenger RNA vaccine, I believe, the spike protein, some of it spills in the blood, and the amount is very similar to the spike protein found in the blood after the infection in severe cases. The difference is it is there for a shorter period of time and then goes away while the adverse severe case it continues for some more time so that's a very interesting and a very huge study their point is something else that many folks i'm seeing are using that study to say look this is the reason not to take uh, the vaccine their point actually is to say when you take a booster it makes it better the immune system's response so they have a different leaning the authors but people have used it for a different so that is a paper that I thought was interesting. Uh, there are some studies for vitamin D that are interesting. So what do you think? So for example, for tomorrow, new ivermectin studies or vitamin D studies or myocarditis or spike in the blood, uh, which one? I actually had one more study today. Um, that was, yeah, so there is a study that came out, I think, yesterday that folks who even have the mild case of uh, SARS-CoV-2, they develop uh, brain tissue damage or inflammation. So there was a ask to discuss that as well. So Ryan says, I hear Luffy, yeah. So he's now meowing because he wants to go back out. Yep. So John, uh, Ivermectin versus Remdesivir. So that is what I was thinking. So maybe tomorrow we do this one. Jody says, can we talk about surviving radiation like from a bomb? We can. Um, I don't know if I'm the right expert on that, but we can talk about it. I can discuss some of these. I can research and discuss them. I hope it doesn't come to that. So Gold Country says always, why not I create a, a poll, poll after this one with these? So neurological damage after the mild disease of SARS-CoV-2, spike in the blood, vitamin D and ivermectin, uh, ivermectin and remdesivir. <laughs> Rima says, don't talk about things that will make your life more difficult. Okay. Alquin says, mine shafts. This actually, Skyfrog is a very interesting question and that is, are there any studies on people who never got it? Yes, 
that will be very interesting to see who are the people who actually never got it and did they really not get it and then what were their genetic makeup or what were their habits or what were their previous exposure to other coronaviruses what happened so that's a Yes, so long hauler is the main theme that I'm working with. The next topic that I had to do was the vagus nerve dysfunction and autonomic dysfunction. And there are studies about long haulers as well, including Dr. Uh, Campbell's. So uh, yes, I would discuss that too. So far, what I know from studies are the following. There is one interesting study for the severe cases that scientists have figured out another 23 genes that predispose someone to become severe. But for the long haulers, what I know so far is, number one, the blood cell abnormalities that is seen. Actually, one more thing that Dr. Campbell said yesterday, this is so interesting. You have to sit with him to just let that knowledge, you know, um, osmose in the system. He said, look, there is a problem and I'm going to draw it. This is actually courtesy of him, but very interesting for long haulers. So what he said was, he said, look, we know that one of the reason in the long haulers are those autoantibodies, correct? So let's say this is an antibody. And this is anti ACE to antibody. By the way, there is a new study about uh, tinnitus as well with SARS CoV 2 that SARS CoV 2 can actually cause infection of the inner ear that causes the damage in tinnitus. So, one of the reasons. So, anti ACE to antibody, correct? This is the one, the network hypothesis, uh, Neil Jenkins theory which Dr. Campbell wrote an article about. The B cells that produce this, these B cells, you know that memory B cells can be in the site of infection or they can be in local lymph nodes, correct? Or they can be in the circulation, B cells and T cells, or some of them can actually, not all cases, but they are seeing that for uh, SARS-CoV-2, this happens. So let's say here we have a bone. So in the bone marrow, And I always make femur, actually, there are better examples of bone marrow, like flat bones or vertebral columns and so on, or vertebral bone, vertebrae. But anyways, imagine this is the bone marrow. He was discussing this yesterday. He said, look, if the B cells, memory B cells, go and sit down in the bone marrow, which you may remember that I had done a study once to discuss that after the natural infection, there is a long-lasting or durable response because the memory B cells end up in the bone marrow. That can happen with the vaccine as well. But that can happen with the autoantibodies as well, meaning when there is a, a person, let's say, who got injured, and now they've gotten these antibodies, and those antibody-producing cells ended up in the bone marrow. Now here, they are long-lasting. They're not going to go away. So if this person is long hauler, they now have a problem that they're going to be long hauler with relapses. That whenever they would get exposed to another coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2, they would have a relapse of their symptoms. And he said that one of his colleagues and he were sitting, or colleagues and he was sitting, and they were discussing that the solution will have to be that somehow we remove these B cells from the bone marrow. And to remove them, of course, there will have to be drastic measure to kill these cells. Bone marrow makes new cells. 
So you cannot just say cells go away from here. So that would be an immune suppression and bone marrow suppression and then reboot of it. So he was saying that that could be one um, possibility to solve for long haulers, those who keep having autoimmune relapses. And the reason for that is this. If this is a reason, then these kind of therapies are available in some bone marrow cancers too. So he was discussing that. You can't imagine that in, in a couple of hours that we sat and discussed how many world of things and topics we discussed. So James says that oh, humans are exposed to PFAs, making it harder for yeah. So I was discussing that the the some of the reasons for long haulers. So of course you're seeing one over here, autoantibodies. Autoantibodies are supposed to normally they're supposed to go away, do their function, go away. But if they become durable like this, now we have a long hauler with autoantibodies with relapses. Every time they get exposed to some common cold or coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2, Omicron, they will relapse. So that's one. Then we saw that the blood cell dysmorphia or the blood cell shape issues we saw. And this study that showed the blood cell shape issues, they had this conclusion that this would stay for two, three months because most of the blood cells are recycled within two, three months. Blood RBCs have 90 days life cycle. Most of the other cells have smaller life cycle. So within two, three months, the blood cells will be recycled. So this person who's become a long hauler may become okay after two, three months because of the blood cell dysmorphia. That's two. Then three, the S1 sitting in the monocyte, Dr. Bruce Peterson's um, research. So that is another. Then four is the Dr. Rasia Pretorius's research, where she said that clotting, microvascular clotting is seen, right? So antibodies are seen in the blood vessels and that is promoting microclots. And she is doing the electrophoresis to clear the clots. And I had this comment and that was, the clearing the clot is interesting because it can start helping with the symptoms immediately. But the cells that are making these antibodies, those are still sitting somewhere and they are continuing to make the antibodies. So you clear them with electrophoresis, which I think electrophoresis is a kind of an invasive procedure, but still dangerous procedure in my opinion. But those who do it, they think it is fine. Um, at least I'm a big proponent of uh, curtailing the damage. So let's say we see the fire, right? So we, we are looking at the fire. What is the fire in case of a long haul? The fire is the inflammation. So we are seeing the inflammation. We are seeing the results of the inflammation, but we do not know what is causing it, correct? So I'm a big proponent of getting ahead of the inflammation, even if it is symptomatic, so that the damage because of the inflammation, so inflammation is of course causing damage. So this damage needs to be prevented so it does not become permanent. For example, permanent nervous tissue damage or per permanent cardiac damage, or permanent blood vascular damages. These will become a problem forever then. So we have to make sure that the permanent part of the damage is not done, or reduced, or stalled, while we're trying to figure out what caused it. And then we attack this part. I'm seeing many doctors saying that because this is not known, I'm not going to treat until this is known 
until I run my labs, until I figure out what could be happening. I think the patient is at risk in that approach because this damage would continue to happen while they are trying to figure out what's the pathology. So now for the uh, long haulers, how many things we know? We know S1 and the congestion. We know the um, autoantibodies or the mean gen theory. We know blood cell dysmorphias. We also know uh, the microclots. What else was known? There is a theory, not a theory, there is a study that said that in the in the appendix of some human beings, and what I do not know, I haven't actually looked at that study in detail, in the appendix they are finding viable viruses sitting there, viable virus to be here. So I have not really looked at that study yet in, in thoroughly to actually understand how reliable is the data, how significant is the data, etc. But this is another, if this is the case, then this would be one more reason. Although on the flip side, there have been studies that said debris of the virus hangs out in the GIT and up to 59 days after the symptoms are resolved, it can be shed. That's a normal behavior. And that presence of the debris actually improves the immune system's behavior by doing the affinity, affinity, affinity maturation. So affinity maturation, we have done this discussion that let's say we have a B cell. This is a B cell. This B cell has already started making antibodies. It has become primed, let's say, for SARS-CoV-2. So this is SARS-CoV-2. It has its own spikes. This B cell has learned to bind to some part of the SARS-CoV-2, and it is now making antibodies for it. If you expose this B cell's copy, is going to go and live in the lymph node where there are follicular dendritic cells follicular dendritic cells, FDCs, and if that antigen is still present, then what would happen is when that antigen would float in, imagine a river flowing into this follicular node, this node. So when the lymph flows in here containing the antigen, then the follicular dendritic cell will pick up this antigen and present it to the memory B cells that are sitting here. and and have them become more mature, train them to bind better. And that better binding is called affinity maturation. So there are studies that show that presence of the debris in the GIT actually helps improve the, um, the response of the immune system. So these are the, some of the studies that are off the top of my head. John Snyder is here, Texas is here. John or Texas, did I miss something? So tech ad says, is long haul incidence reduced if early treatment is successful? Ideally, yes. Ideally, yes, but there are no, no studies to discuss that. Yes, so Chad says, is there a study of why people are having increased anxiety and neurological issues? So neurological issues, one of the reasons for the neurological issues is this monocytes and the inflammation at the boundaries of the blood vessels in the brain. And that causes some congestion of the brain tissue which can then cause behavioral differences as well, including depression, anxiety, fear, and so on. So yes, there are studies that have uh, postulated this. So Jim Maddox says, vitamin K2 helps activate the S and C proteins that prevent micro blood clots. Thank you, Jim. Uh, 
<laughs> Bobo says, Rakumi, why don't you start your own coffee brand? I think we should do it. Luffy coffee. Yes. I have something has happened either after COVID or in general. I do not like Starbucks coffee anymore. I totally do not like it. So I was talking with my wife to say that, hey, I need to change my coffee where I get that or I have to make my own coffee at home because I'm not super excited about Starbucks coffee. I do not know why I don't like their coffee anymore. Radmila says, good, very early morning. Dr. Bean and Cool Beans, same to you as well. All right, so this guy is stuck. I'm going to stop sharing this screen while it finishes. Oh, man, it's 8.13. So is it your mom? COVID messed up my coffee taste horribly. I think COVID messed up my coffee taste. And I think this is one of the ways of long COVID. A very subtle one, but a distaste. See, this is Luffy coffee. Yes, sure. RS says, I have a question. Okay, I may have an answer, RS. Chad says, doctors won't listen to me or even do blood work. The nurses told me that it was normal to pass out when getting it. Uh, getting the vaccine. So, question is, do you continue to have the uh, side effects? Nipa says, try South Indian filer coffee, yummy. Okay. I'll have to find that here. MGW says super chat. Thank you. <laughs> Radmila says I'm late. 5.15 a.m. Rambling says coffee tasted like dirt for a month. Much better taste now. Yeah, so to me, it just... It just does not taste good at all. So Paul says, you think your sense of taste was, but I think it's not actually sense of taste. It's the, the nose. It's hyposmia or paraosmia, so whatever that term should be. Kind of a nosemia, but not actually, an, I can still smell things. But I think it is that a nosemia type behavior or let's say altered sense of smell which then alters the sense of taste as well the flavor is altered i don't think that there is any uh, study that has shown sars-cov-2 affecting the um, the taste buds or the uh, nerves that work with the taste but we know about uh, the anosmia thing or the olfactory nerve issues and taste changes with that YouTube says, uh, you betcha says, I, I've been calling you YouTube, I'm so sorry. Try for Sigmatic Mushroom Coffee. Okay, I'll go and find that tomorrow. Uh, John Snyder says, it tastes sour to me, not burnt. Yeah, to me, I cannot even, it does taste sour to me as well, you're correct. Correct, sour, bitter. I actually wanted to go back to Starbucks one day and say, your coffee has started becoming bitter. Then I thought it is something to do with my, uh, my taste and uh, maybe something to do with after the COVID. John Snyder says that there are studies on ultra taste. Yes. The, the, it's not about the studies. It's about me thinking, do I have it or not?
<laughs> Techcat says it was a variant developed to take business away from Starbucks. Yes. <laughs> Nipa says, go back to chai, garam chai. So my wife likes tea. I like coffee. But maybe I should go to chai. <laughs> Reema says, I'm still not right. My ears buzz all the time and I can't unclog my ears at all. No matter how hard I try, I can't pop them. Yeah. So not able to pop is a different issue. So let me explain some parts of it. Again, I do not know exact pathology, but if I look at the middle ear structure, go to images. So let's use the, okay, this one. this one oh, i i hate this thing that google does okay so let's see okay so uh, let me share my screen for a second rima so if you see here <clears throat> the way our ears work is let me draw that as well is that we have let's say this is ear and then this is the ear canal so this part is outside that is connected outside then there is this box middle ear and here is the drum of the ear then middle ear on the internal side on the we call it medial in our medical term on this side so imagine this is the box if i make a box like this a 3d box so this is a box In this box over here is the eardrum. Let me make it a little bigger. Right, so here is the eardrum. The other side has a couple of windows as well that open in the inner ear. And within this box, there are what we say ear ossicles or little tiny bones that convey the movement of the eardrum through those bones all the way here, um, stapes and malleus and incus are the, bo the bones. Wow, I can still remember them. Am I correct? Yeah, look at this. This is called stapes. This is malleus and this is incus. Wow, I can still remember these bones in the ear. So what happens is then the, the front of this box is connected to inside of our cheek. So the cheek inside has this little tube called Eustachian tube that comes and opens there. Now what is important is for our ear, the, bo the box here, it is important for it to have the same pressure as the environment. The reason for that is this eardrum will not function correctly if the inside pressure and outside pressure is different. Imagine if the outside pressure is more and inside pressure is less. Then what would happen is this eardrum will be pushed inward because of the outside pressure. <coughs> Excuse me. And the result will be it will become t tight, right? It will be pushed and it would be stretched. So it will not move very well and we would feel a feeling of dampness. Similarly, imagine if the pressure outside is less and inside is more, then this eardrum will be pushed outwards and it will stretch outwards, but it would kind of bulge out. But because it became stretched, 
it cannot vibrate that easily and we will feel a feeling of dampness. And we would feel the urge to pop our ears. What do we mean by that is that when that dampness occurs and we pop our ears, what happens is when we swallow or we, we open our mouth like this, what we do is we stretch the walls of the cheek in which is this eustachian tube. So when we stretch the wall that opens up the eustachian tube like a small balloon which is stretched, and when it opens up, immediately the pressure from outside, that is outside of the mouth and inside the mouth is the pressure outside, right? That pressure becomes equated inside the middle ear and that would immediately bring this eardrum back to its normal position and it would start vibrating correctly and you would hear correctly. So that is one. Normally, popping the ear in these kind of situations become difficult. For example, when the pressure outside is too low or pressure inside is too high or low and we just cannot do anything. For example, when we are flying, the pressures are changed in a way that just popping the ears would not help very much. Or imagine when we have an infection and inside the ear, ear is filled with pus and fluids. And now the question of popping is really not easy because of that pus and fluid is pushing the eardrum. So until it is resolved, we cannot easily pop. And during that time, the sound would look sound would sound damp. Then once we have we are in the inner ear, the inner ear is like a if I stretch it out, it's normally in the shape of this coil this little coil that you can see here. So instead of that coil, if I stretch it out, now inner ear like a piano has hair cells on it. I cannot imagine I love medicine so much that these are the topics I studied 30 years ago. I still remember them. Okay, so here are the hair cells. From these hair cell are the nerves <clears throat> that are taking the messages. And these hair cells are different, different from each other in terms of length. So length of the hair cell and the diameter. That kind of changes how will they resonate, how would they vibrate. A lengthy and lean hair cell would resonate with a different frequency compared to, let's say, a taut and a stout hair cell. That would have a different frequency. A fat hair cell would have a different frequency. A lean would have a different frequency. So because of these changes in the hair cell, they are long and thin, and then they slowly become short and thick. And that kind of produces all frequencies. So when our eardrum moves, and the ossicles move and the pressure of the fluid inside here, this is like a hydraulic system. This whole uh, pipe is filled with uh, fluid. That pressure kind of moves the fluid here and whatever is the frequency of the movement, the hair cell that are pertinent to that frequency, they would start vibrating. And when they will vibrate, that is the frequency that we feel. Now, why did I talk this much about this one? There is another time when we feel we have dampening of the sound. If these hair cells are not moving correctly, or if the nerve that is taking messages from there is not taking the messages correctly, or the auditory system that actually receives the messages and interprets them, that is not interpreting them correctly. All of those could become viable structures to be looked at if the ears are, if the hearing is not the same. So for me, the most important question will be, do your ears pop sometimes by themselves and then they go back or they are permanently in this state? If they are permanently in this state, I would not think that you have a permanent pressure change. So there is actually one more area that I uh, forgot to mention that is, ear ossicles. So these ear ossicles, these ear ossicles, these kind of two 
blue and this white one. Ear ossicles, they are present inside like this. So let's say there is one that is attached to the eardrum. Another one is attached here. Then there is one that stapes has this kind of structure with it. And this stapes in turn is connected to the canal in which fluid is present. And this moves in and out when the drum moves here. Now, sometimes these ossicles, they are articulating their bones with joints and they need to freely move to be able to take the vibration from here to on the eardrum all the way in the fluid. And sometimes if they, let's say there was an infection in the ear and there is now pus that has become fibrosed over here, or this happens sometimes in people with arthritis as well, that the bones start kind of becoming, joints become less mobile, including the ear joint, ear ossicle joints. And what would happen is now the, the ear is vibrating the drum correctly. The pressure inside the middle ear is correct. The inner ear is all functional and correct as well. The neuron, the nerve is correct. The vestibular cochlear nerve is correct as well. Everything is good here. Cells are good, but the bones are not moving correctly. And when they are not moving correctly, you'll feel dampening of the sound as well. And you would feel that I cannot pop it. I cannot let it go because it would sound, it would seem like a taut eardrum, but basically it's the lack of movement or a reduced movement. Now, out of all of these pathologies, which one is it that is um, there? That is the function of a um, ENT kind of a person to go through them one by one to see what it is. For me, the most important first question to ask will be, is it in both ears, same way, continuously? Or do you sometimes get a correction and then it becomes bad again? I think that would be the start of the question. So sorry, I got carried away to describe this. So uh, Rima said, yes, yes. So um, meaning, do you sometimes have a correction? So both ears all the time. So so we should we should talk about it. Both ears all the time what i would love to see is actually you do some test to actually test one ear versus the other one so let me go back to this that if it is bilateral then if i bring in these all the pathologies here and this is the let's say this is one ear right if i make a copy of this one this system I make a copy, I go to a layer, and then if I flip that layer, and then I move it away. So imagine now, these are, oh, these are two ears, and then there are two parts of the brain, the audio auditory center is not here, but imagine we, the whole anat anatomical structures are out of place now. But anyways, this is the brain. We are seeing it from the front. So let's say there is auditory areas. If there is bilateral equal dampening, then I would have really hard time to think both sides of the brain tissue are not working correctly. But at the same time, if let's say there is congestion in the brain tissue, then the whole brain, when it is compressed, it would feel this kind of uh, activity everywhere. It is also hard for me to believe that both internal ears got equally damaged. 
that would be hard to create a equal damage in both. This is why it is imp important to have a ENT who would actually play various frequencies for each ear separately to see if they both are equally damaged or differently damaged or different frequencies. But it would be hard for me to say both internal ear equally damaged. Similarly, the only time I could probably say this might be happening would be if these ossicles, because of the infection of the middle ear and the pus present there, which may have become fibrosed. And so ear ossicles not oscillating correctly or vibrating correctly may be, <coughs> excuse me, may be a reason. Um, so the, these ossicles, that is what I think is the approach to see the problem, but this has to be something to sit down with the ENT and kind of explore it. My observation is um, folks are not very, I don't know why do they not go logically step by step to rule out or rule in various things. Blonde roast is a, is great. So is that a coffee? Is that which place is that coffee? Adi says I have had intermittent inflammation in my ears. Sometimes I hear crystals. What can that possibly be? So the intermittent inflammation in the ears. So again, as I said, there are many parts of the ears. So it depends what part. But sometimes when these um, ossicles or the middle ear the joints are not working correctly, just like we can crack our knuckles like these. We can crack our ossicle joints as well or sort of crack and that can create a clicking sound. Anissa, yeah, I pray for Rima's. Starbucks does make it. Okay, I'm going to try it. Rima says, thank you for such great explanation. You're very welcome. I hope that you become okay. That is more important. So, Lorna, one second. Uh, Richard says blonde rose has more caffeine. Okay, I'm going to try <laughs> more caffeine. I'll be jittery. Lona says, I do understand all precautionary measures to flatten the curve and not to overwhelm healthcare workers. Won't there be a time when everyone is exposed to Micron? Anyways, very soon. I'm confused. Yes. And I think in majority of the societies that has happened or is happening. Chad, there are many, many people, actually there are studies that discuss the behavioral differences after COVID infections as part of long COVID. And it is not just the psych, look, Dr. Z was here, she is actually a better person than I am. But if I get, let's say, a pain, I actually remember this part of my hand has become permanently numb after drawing for two years for these COVID talks. When it was in the beginning, now it is numb, I have just accepted it that that's how it is, it is numb. But when it was in the early days, it just became numb and it was kind of ex expanding. I thought I'm going to become disabled and this is the only way I earn. I draw and I teach and I earn, that is how I work. And this is my right hand. I do everything with the right hand. So I had depression and anxiety uh, for my well-being, for my livelihood and all those things. And you could argue that hey, that was not just this is not sufficient to have that anxiety, but there, there was an anxiety. The point I'm making is there is a legitimate actual worry that happens when we are sick and not feeling well or have something that is stuck to us and then on top of that 
there is possibility of uh, nervous system behaving differently because of some of the COVID outcomes. So it is kind of a double whammy that one a person develops these psychological effects because of neurological um, outcomes. And on top of that, there is additional anxiety to say, what the heck has happened to me? I was not like this. And that adds to the anxiety. And then on top of that, when people dismiss a person, then that adds even further um, anxiety and stress. So this is the, um, so Robin says, you've been the light in all of this. Thank you for your dedication. You're very welcome. So there is a blonde rose disguise. Other companies make it too. Okay, so I'm going to try it. So let's take this for today. And the ulnar nerve starfire is talking about the nerve. Yeah. So the, please like, subscribe, and share. There is a link in the description. That is a magical link. That has a price of Dr. Bean premium, thousand, about thousand pieces of videos. Such a low price that even one video should be more expensive than that. But anyways, if you would like to, please use that to um, buy coffees. There are certain discussions on which I cannot monetize anymore. So for example, this discussion we talked about uh, Rochelle Walensky. So I cannot monetize it because somebody is going to complain. YouTube is going to come back and say, this was not safe for advertisers. And my video before this one, I cannot monetize that either because of the topic I discussed. That is the uh, Pfizer FDA documents and the side effects. And they, they're just going to say, this is not, uh, this is incorrect information. So the alternative is whoever likes to have access to Dr. Bean Premium, when you buy it, that is one way to support it. So thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and share. There are links in the description to either have Dr. Bean account or buy me a coffee or use PayPal or be a patron. I would see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is correct. This censorship brought to you by Pfizer. Actually, Pfizer's minions. So Pfizer itself is just sitting somewhere saying, do this. And then these minions are just running around, carrying out the orders. So thank you very much. See you tomorrow.